Have you ever wondered what the seller's duties are in a caveat enter state? Hello, my name is Mary Lisk and welcome to my channel, where I'll share tips and information on North Carolina real estate, as well as highlight people and places in this beautiful state. In the second video of my three-part series, I'll share with you what the seller's duties are in a caveat enter state. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Just a quick recap for my first video. The doctrine of caveat enter basically holds that except in cases involving fraud by the seller or the seller's agent, the seller has no affirmative obligation to disclose information about the property being sold to the purchaser and places the burden on the buyer to investigate the property before contracting to purchase the property. What are the seller's duties? Do sellers have absolutely no obligation to disclose information to the buyers? Well, the seller has very limited obligation to the buyer. But there are at least two things the sellers are obligated to do when it comes to disclosing information. First, avoid any kind of fraudulent behavior. A limited exception to the caveat emptor doctrine is that the seller must avoid engaging in any sort of fraud intended to induce the buyer to forego an investigation that might reveal facts the seller does not want to be disclosed. But remember, in a suit by a buyer against a seller for fraud, the courts will consider whether the information in question was reasonably discoverable through a diligent inspection by the buyer. Remember, it's the buyer's responsibility to investigate and inspect a property prior to purchase. But the court will also consider whether the seller engaged in conduct intended to induce the buyer to avoid an inspection that might reveal information. For example, think of a seller saying, don't worry about wasting your money on a septic inspection. We had one done last month. But what they didn't share is that it was inspected by the seller's friend who didn't note on the inspection that the septic tank was too small for the house. Oh, it may be in good working condition, but if they would have hired their own inspector, they may have found out that they would need to replace the whole tank with a much larger septic. Remember, in North Carolina, the septic must be large enough for two people per room. If it's a two-bedroom house, it needs to have a septic large enough for four people. Secondly, the seller in most residential transactions has an obligation under North Carolina law to provide buyers with a residential property and owners association disclosure statement. That's the form that asks a series of questions about the house to the seller, like when was the roof installed or what is the dwelling's water supply source? Is it city, well, or shared well? But here's the catch. A seller is not required to actually disclose any problems on the disclosure statement. A seller could simply say no representation on about all the items listed on the disclosure form, rather than answering yes or no. They can simply choose not to disclose information. Remember, it's on the buyer to discover. You may be thinking, okay, well, obviously no representation is a reason to be alarmed. No representation, however, isn't always a red flag. The seller may not know the answer to some of the questions on the statement. Like, what kind of material is the dwelling's water pipes made out of in the house? Not everyone knows all about their plumbing. Just remember, sellers cannot commit fraud, or shall I say, shouldn't commit fraud. They have to fill out the form, but they can choose not to disclose information, and it's up to you as the buyer to use your due diligence period wisely and learn all there is to discover about a property prior to the contract closing date. Thank you for watching and check out my next video on real estate agents duties in the caveat emptor state.